Welcome to the SPSS demonstration video for Chapter 4, Probability Distributions. I'm the author of your text, Richard Landers. In this video, we'll be exploring how to compute z-scores and how to make meaningful conclusions based on those z-scores, including the computation of percentiles. So here we're seeing uh, six months worth of data, July through December. What we're interested in determining, and uh, again, I would recommend that you always review your case study and your, uh, the written portion of the book as an accompaniment to these videos, uh, is that we're trying to determine, are the employees represented here? Uh, are they atypically or are they typically uh, strong, weak, or otherwise? And to do that, we don't want to look at any one month. Because if we look at a single month, we can, be, we can be deceived. Because some months just are higher for everyone or lower for everyone. Instead, we only want to capture long-term patterns of behavior. So that means the first thing that we need to do is convert each of these scores to z-scores within the months. To do that, we're going to open Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Descriptives. This is going to give us the option to create z-scores by checking this box at the bottom, save standardized values as variables. We're going to move all six of our variables over to the right. We've discussed how to do that several times now, so hopefully that is uh, pretty easy for you. The options menu, actually not real important here because we're really just interested in the z-scores. So hit OK. Uh, it will look just, the, op the output panel will pop up as if nothing is wrong. It seems everything is normal. Uh, but in reality, if we go back to the data set, we will discover that a whole new set of variables have been created, uh, Z July to Z DEC. And those are the individual scores for each person converted into Z scores within those months. So this 0.85 right here means that this employee uh, was 0.85 standard deviations above the mean in their July sales among those sellers in July. So the next thing that we want to know is, on average, what is the z-score for these individuals? To do that, we're going to have to create a new score. We do that with the trans under the Transform menu by selecting Compute Variable. This opens up the Compute Variable dialog. We want to create a new variable called z-mean, as we want to know what is the, uh, what is the mean score of all of those, uh, what is the mean of all of the z-scores that we have available. So we're going to type in the mean numeric expression a formula which will compute that mean for us, which is just mean, open parentheses, and then each of our z variables. You can just type the names of them, that totally works. You can also double click uh, and then type a comma. You can also drag. So whichever of those techniques use is best for you, you should go with that. I personally prefer a combination of double clicking and commas just because it's a little faster. Don't forget to close the parenthesis uh, at the end. So we have mean, open paren, the various z variables that we just created, close paren. Once you've done that, hit OK. Output pane will pop up, but nothing will show there. But if we go back to our data set, you will see that a new z mean variable has appeared. Now you'll notice here that these variables are all 0, 1, 2, etc., but that doesn't seem right. They shouldn't be that. And that's because the, the SPSS has defaulted to a display format that doesn't really reflect what the underlying variable is. If we click on this one, for example, we can see that that's really 0.6807, et cetera. To fix this, you can go into variable view, scroll down to z-mean, and just add a few decimal points. Now everything looks a little bit more correct. Now that we have computed, a, uh, now that we have computed the appropriate z-scores, the last step to determining how unusual a particular employee is, is to calculate what is the percentile rank associated with that employee. So to do that, we're going to add one more variable, transform compute. That's the way that we all, that's what we always use to add a new variable based on other variables. And here, we're going to call this one uh, percentile to represent the percentile rank. And we're going, to use the, we're going to use this formula called CDF normal. What CDF normal does is it determines what is the probability associated with a particular score given a particular normal distribution with a particular mean and a particular standard deviation. There are three terms for this formula. The first term is, uh, the first thing that we put after the parenthesis is 
what is the score that we're interested in examining. In this case, we want to look at z-mean. The next variable that we add is the mean of the distribution we want to compare it to. Uh, since we're looking at a normal distribution, that number is zero. And the next is the standard deviation. And again, since we're looking at a normal a standard normal distribution, that number is one. Close paren, and that now we have a complete formula. CDF.normal z-mean zero one. So what we're telling SPSS to tell us is given this particular mean, how probable is it, what would the percentile be, given a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one? We hit OK. Again, output pane pops up for absolutely no reason, because that's just how SPSS is. And a new, for, a new item has appeared called percentile, which doesn't have the right number of uh, decimal points. We click back over to variable view to fix that as well. And there we go. Now we have a whole set of percentiles. Now what we can do with this, uh, we have the 76th percentile here, we have the 5th percentile here, we have the 71st here. What we can do with this is sort and examine, do we have any particularly weak employees? To sort, we can go to the data menu and select sort cases. That's one way to do it. The easier way to do it is simply right click on the top of that column where it says percentile and choose sort ascending or sort descending, depending on what you're interested in. We'll sort ascending so that we have the lower performing ones on the top. And we can see here, just glancing through these means and these percentiles, it looks like there's a substantial group of people who are just much worse than the others. We see kind of a slow meandering from 0 to 0 0.3, negative 0.4, negative 0.6, and then a whole group at around negative 1 to negative 1.5, negative 1.8. So it seems like there's a, a noticeable group that is consistently and persistently not doing well. Uh, so if I was uh, the manager of this group, those are the people that I would be concerned about. So given that, we now know how to compute, uh, we know how to compute z-scores and determine the percentile ranks associated with those z-scores, uh, which gives us a little bit more insight into probability distributions. And that's it for Chapter 4.